Good morning, everyone, and thank you all very much for coming. As you often hear me say here at Metro Government, we're doing everything we can every day to make Louisville a safer, stronger, and healthier city. And at the top of that list is public safety, ensuring that everyone is safe and feels safe, regardless of where they live in our city. You can see that reflected in the budget proposal that I've made to Metro Council that they are considering and hopefully pass next week. It calls for new investments in programs like group violence intervention so we can prevent more crimes from happening in the first place. We're also committed to investing in recruiting and training new police officers. With the State General Assembly about things we might do within the state law to help us address the unique issue we have in Louisville, urban gun violence. And LMPD. All of these actions and processes are underway. But if we're not able, we are taking action. We are moving forward and taking steps like we're going to hear about today to help us improve public safety, to do everything we can at LMPD with partner organizations and every agency of Metro government to make Louisville a safer city. The first announcement we have today focuses on the great work LMPD is doing to solve more crimes by examining the way police officers are assigned to different kinds of cases. We have a huge focus on homicides and that definitely should be the case and will remain the case. But at the same time, there are far too many shootings overall, including non-fatal shootings. And the reality is that a lot of times the difference between a fatal shooting and a non-fatal shooting can be a matter of inches or even less, oftentimes a matter of luck or good fortune. I know that as well as anyone does. So the bottom line is that when it comes to gun violence, whatever the outcome of the shooting, the shooter is someone who made a choice to solve a dispute with a gun and put other people's lives in danger. Oftentimes, the same people who pull the triggers in non-fatal shootings commit homicides and other crimes. So we want to elevate the work of investigating non-fatal shootings. That means making these types of cases a higher priority and providing officers investigating these cases with specialized training and resources in partnership with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. As of last month, LMPD has formed a new non-fatal shooting squad. So to tell us more about the non-fatal shooting squad and its work, I'd like to first welcome Interim Chief of Police, Jacqueline Gwynn Billeroel. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. I'm just so pleased to be able to stand here with you today to demonstrate the movement of LMPD and how we are doing things differently. With the creation of the non-fatal shooting squad is bringing about the collaboration of investigators, experienced supervisors, and leadership moving in a direction to ensure that we can get a handle on this violent crime. The creation of the non-fatal shooting squad is brought about so that we can move away from being a silo agency, working collectively together with our federal partners, ATF, embedded with us is also too our crime analysts who will be able to look at the data and be able to point us in the direction that we need to go. And with this particular unit, I am surely confident that we will be able to solve more cases and to be able to actually look at those individuals who are driving our violent crime in our beautiful city, Louisville. And so with that, I would like to bring forth today Lieutenant Lacefield, who is the commander of the unit, and so he can give more details in the direction and where we are going with this unit. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I'm Lieutenant Steve Lacefield. I'm the commander of the non-fatal shooting squad. 
Homicide and non-fatal gun crime share many of the same characteristics and are often only separated by good medicine and timely responses by law enforcement. Our unit was started in response to this and given the resources to investigate these crimes with the same level of commitment that we do for homicide. Historically, non-fatal shootings have been investigated at the division level by a single detective. Detectives who were also tasked to investigate multiple other offenses, such as burglary or other thefts. When they responded to a shooting, they would oftentimes be responsible for interviewing a victim, witness, and processing the scene by themselves. We now respond to non-fatal shootings with a team who is specifically trained to investigate gun violence. This allows the lead detective to be interviewing a victim at the hospital while receiving real-time updates from on-scene detectives who are gathering evidence and speaking with witnesses. Our partners with the ATF and Real-Time Crime Center have dedicated personnel to work inside of our unit. They bring value to our team by assisting with federal prosecution and gaining the critical intelligence necessary to address gun violence, and we were very grateful for their help. We will be a well-trained, professional, and effective asset to the Louisville Metro Police Department, but we still need the community's help to reach our full potential. The information that we get from you is our most valuable resource in stopping violence. We will work hard to build strong relationships and a positive line of communication so we can work together to make our city a better place. If you have any information regarding a non-fatal shooting, please call our anonymous tip line at 574-LNPD. Thank, Thank you very much, Lieutenant Lacefield. We're also joined here today by a representative from the ATF Assistant Special Agent in Charge, A.J. Gibbs. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. My name is A.J. Gibbs, and I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of ATF's Louisville Field Division. I oversee criminal investigations here in Louisville, as well as Western Kentucky, and the operation of our Crime Gun Intelligence Center. ATF's mission is to protect our communities from violent crime. In Louisville, we do that by working closely with LMPD and other agencies to identify criminals who use firearms and to hurt others. Much of the work that ATF does focuses on the source of crime guns, firearms traffickers, and armed career, career uh, organizations, including gangs, who are responsible for many of the amounts of violence here in Louisville. Together, ATF, LMPD, and our law enforcement partners are continuously working together to get better, to operate smarter, and to be more effective in reducing violent crime. An example of this dedication to these efforts uh, to the community include the formation of LMPD's non-fatal shooting unit. ATF is proud to partner with LMPD on this new initiative and have dedicated ATF special agents as well as uh, investigative analysts from our Crime Gun Intelligence Center and other federal resources to include firearms tra uh, tra tracing as well as uh, NIBIN uh, ballistics technology to these efforts to support LMPD's new non-fatal shooting unit. LMPD continues to make significant strides in effort to drive down both homicides and non-fatal shootings but we know that there is still more work to be done because even just one shooting in our community is one shooting too many. I hope this message is clear today that we will not stand and allow those who use guns and violence in our community to terrorize others will be supported at all and that the community should feel safer with the efforts that we're making today. Chief uh, Gwyn uh, Biarreal, I wanna thank you and your leadership to the city of Louisville, as well as uh, LMPD's excellent partnership that they have with ATF. I would also like to thank Mayor Greenberg and his office for their continued efforts to reduce crime in Louisville. ATF stands with LMPD, and we are committed to making sure that Louisville is a safer place to work and to live here. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your collective leadership and to everyone on the non-fatal shooting squad. Their work is going to be incredibly important in the days, months, and years ahead. We also have one other very important announcement to make today that also relates to our work to reduce homicides and violent crime in our city. In this case, by finding and arresting more of the people who are committing these acts of violence and who are a threat 
to the people of Louisville. One of our biggest challenges is the number of open homicide cases we have here in our city. LMPD's homicide clearance rate is improving. In 2021, it was about 27%. It went up in 2022, and so far this year, it's a little over 40%. That's improvement. We will continue to improve, but we want to do everything we can to hold those, everyone accountable who uses a weapon for wrong reasons. It's important progress you're hearing about, but it still means that there are far too many unsolved homicides. And that almost certainly means that there are people out in the community who are still a danger to our city and who need to be arrested and tried. The police are working day and night tirelessly on all of these investigations. The reality is that many of these crimes take place in private and among people who know each other. And the truth is that it's really a relatively small number of people who are committing an enormous amount of our crime. And we know there are people in our city who have seen some of these crimes happen and they're horrified by them. They're scared as anyone would be. Or maybe they didn't see something happen directly, but they did see something or heard something or came across some information about a crime that could help us get a shooter off the street and help us get justice for the victim and the people grieving the loss or injury of someone they love. This happens over and over, where people are injured or killed and we don't hear anything from those who saw it. We understand the challenges, whether it's at the mall, at a park, across the street from where you live. That's why we set up 574 LMPD, as you just heard. It's our city's anonymous tip line. Let me stress that again, 574 LMPD is an anonymous tip line. We encourage anyone who see, has any evidence that they think might be helpful to solve a crime to call that number. But it's also why we partner with Kentuckiana Crime Stoppers, because we know that some people might be more comfortable sharing sensitive information with a third party. Crime Stoppers has been helping solve crimes in Louisville for over 40 years. They offer cash rewards for people who provide crucial tips that help the police make arrests. Kentuckiana Crime Stoppers is not part of city government. They are a private, nonprofit organization. And we want to do whatever we can to support them so that and help we can help our police officers solve more cases, particularly homicide cases. As you all may recall, when I was inaugurated as mayor in a ceremony here at Metro Hall on January 2nd, we raised some private funds to pay for much of that inauguration event. And we wound up with just over $36,000 more than we needed for that event. And by law, I'm legally permitted to donate those funds to a charitable organization. And so that's why I'm announcing today that I'm donating more than $36,000 from my inauguration fund to Kentuckiana Crime Stoppers. I hope that will help them work with more people gathering information to help our police officers close these unsolved cases and get dangerous people off of our streets. I encourage anyone else who wants to support Crime Stoppers with their own charitable donation to also give to Kentuckiana Crime Stoppers to join in this effort so they can help us solve more crimes and get dangerous people off of that street, off of our streets. The only way we make our city safer is by working together. There are many ways in which we can do that. And one way that everyone can help is if you see something, say something. So you can call Kentuckiana Crime Stoppers at 582-CLUE. That's 582 25 Eight, three. David Yates is the executive director of Crime Stoppers, and he and his colleagues are with us today. Thank you all so much for all of your work and your partnership. And David, if you please like to come forward and share some words, and thank you very much for your partnership in this effort. We look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, Mayor. I appreciate it. We would like to, from Crime Stoppers, thank uh, the mayor and his administration and LMPD on the uh, uh, very generous contribution to Crime Stoppers. As the mayor said, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. 
and we depend on uh, donations in order to help pay our callers. And you might have uh, information that you're uh, uh, hesitant to call, but uh, we can guarantee that our phones, we have no caller ID, we never ask for your name, and as the mayor said, we've been here for 41 years, and no name has been divulged out into the community on our callers. You might have issues with law enforcement yourself. We just want the information that will help police solve the felony ca homicide cases and other cases that might be helpful to them in solving felony cases such as homicides. So again, we thank uh, the mayor, uh, the administration, and L LMPD, and we look forward to working with them in a more closer way in which we can help our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. As you can see, these are just two of the many steps that LMPD and our entire administration are taking to strengthen and improve public safety in Louisville. There'll be many more in the days, weeks, and months ahead. So with that, we are happy to take any questions that members of the media might have. Yeah, the chief and I actually talked about this in one of our very early conversations back in January. And then just in terms of figuring out how much money was left in the inauguration funds once all the bills that got paid and everything else that we were focused on, it, we, are, we are now here today. Uh, were you referring to the kind shoppers or the non-fatal? Excuse me, the non-fatal. Okay, that's what I thought as I was answering the question. I'll let the chief answer that one. It's her idea. <laughs> this has been top of mind for me for quite some time, but we had to get into a space where the timing was right. Um, and, and selecting those individuals that will be able to have the, the discipline and the mindset in order to work in such a close-knit unit in order to solve these non-fatal shooting investigations. Um, and so this is what you have today. And again, like I said earlier, um, LMPD is, is working even internally to make sure that we are not working in silos and that we're coming together and bringing those creative ideas um, to the table and that we are, have one mission and one vision and we're going in that direction. But let me also, too, let me just reiterate this and just really push it, um, bring it on home. We can't do anything in solving any investigation, non-fatal or homicide, without the public's help. That is the main critical element in order for us to bring peace and closure to families that are suffering and in a lot of pain. And so with that, I just want to truly stress that we need the public's input and help in order for us to continue to make um, this city a safer city. No, sir. No, sir. So this is, this is we're embarking upon this, creating this non-fatal shooting squad. Um, I had experience with this before um, in my law enforcement um, career in, a pre in the previous um, department that I was over um, with in that particular unit. So I know the value in creating this particular unit, and I'm hoping to uh, receive, see some great, great results from, their, from this creation. Thank you. Yes. And so they're coming from the divisions. And so all we're doing is from the divisions that they were already working, non-fatal shootings within the eight divisions. And so we just selected those individuals from those eight divisions to just to come together and work as a team. So it's not a replacement. We're just bringing all the eight divisions together. And this, you have this stand-up unit. So they were previously just that is correct. Job. There you go. So now we're just working in one cohesive space. Yes, and that, that was changed um, under um, the previous administration, um, and I have to give credit um, to uh, then interim chief um, Gentry. She changed that, um, that particular setup with the homicide unit actually working those, those non-fatal shootings at the same time, and which was a very smart move, and it should have, yeah, that, that needed to happen. And so the non-fatal shooting investigations have been working in the division level for some time now. So what's in the latest bill? Yes, sir. As of this morning, late last night, early this morning, we had our 201st non-fatal shooting year to date. 
My unit has been active 30 days today. We've taken 40 cases on. The clearance rate is what happened in years past. I don't have that data with me or prior to our unit taking over. I don't have that data with me right now. We are at six clearances and 40 shootings with nine arrests and several more pending right now. Yes, sir. All right. One more question. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.